open your Bibles tonight, if you will, to 1 Peter, to the Word of God, and let us step into the Apostle Peter's epistle in 1 Peter to the pilgrims of the scattered Jews in Pontius and Galatia and Cappadocia and Asia and Bynathia, uh, the elect according to the foreknowledge of God, to the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience in the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. I am sure that when Peter wrote this letter, he had not anticipated that there would be gaps in reading his letter. I am sure that when he sent these letters out, I would think that he believed that all the letter would be written and that there would be a gap in weeks because the Bible was written for the express purposes of reading it in a letter so that we could grasp what God is saying in his word through the apostle Peter. Grace to you. God is speaking through Peter through the written word. So tonight as we look at the Bible that you have in your hand, you have in front of you God's Word. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and that is a definition of the gospel. Verse 3 is a clear definition of the gospel. To the inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Then the next paragraph is from verse 6 to verse 9. The next paragraph that we discuss is verse 6 through verse 9 and if uh, uh, if Charity, if you'll read that please. Verse 6 through verse 9. In this we greatly rejoice, that now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith, with greater work than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. We have just finished reading the first ten verses, nine verses, of the written word of God. And God has spoken. I want us to realize tonight that God has spoken in His Word. I, as a servant of the Lord, am required in my, quality, in my responsibilities is to share with you God's Word and help you and myself realize that when God said it, we are to 
listen with the desire to learn and the desire to know what God has for us to say. And all of the books in the Bible, they are there to help you to live a life of godliness and obedience to the Lord. And it provides your sanctification. Tonight, we look in verse 8. Though unseen, they still love Christ. Though unseen, they still love Christ. The inexpressible joy that we are, Paul, Peter has expressed to this churches, the inexpressible joy in knowing Christ himself. Verse 8 and 9. Whom, having not seen, ye love, Though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I cannot think of a marvelous verse for us today. You find joy in sources of joy comes in, verse 6, a protected inheritance, a proven faith, and a promise honored, and then, number four, a personal fellowship. Tonight we want to look at a personal fellowship. There is where we can have an inexpressible joy of a personal fellowship. Why do you rejoice? Why is there joy? The text tells us because you love him and because you trust him. Understand, to know the Lord is to love him and to love him is to trust him, is to believe him, and to believe him is to trust him. Love to an unseen Savior. Love to an unseen Savior. You love Him, believe in Him, even though you have never seen Him. Love and trust. So tonight, the idea is, we these people never saw the Savior, but they rejoiced in Him and they had a great fellowship with Him. Would you say two of the most important elements in a personal relationship would be love and trust. And that's true. Love and trust are the essence of relationship. It is the source of surpassing joy. You violate love and the relationship disappears. You violate trust and the relationship disappears. Would you say of the disciples that demonstrated a weak trust in Christ and they saw him other than Judas? Which one trusted him less, demonstrated weakness more than any other apostle? And of course that would be Peter who was one of the twelve who faced Jesus face to face and having his love questioned. Peter's love was questioned and he saw, Peter, he saw Christ face to face. Peter, Jesus said, Peter, do you really love me? And wouldn't you know it is Peter who in humility teaches us his lesson that he learned. Peter didn't waste that experience. Peter had so little weak faith in Jesus, but then Peter learned his lesson and he wrote a book on it. Here Peter is saying to his people, you love the Lord and believe in him, and yet you have not seen him. He is saying too, 
that they were far ahead of him in this matter. I saw him and couldn't keep my love or keep my faith. So Peter reflects on his past and these Christian presence in their suffering. And he's, he's seen Christ sat beside Christ, touched Christ, and he demonstrated a weak love and a weak faith. And they had never seen Christ nor had they talked with Christ, yet they had a strong faith and a love that was real in the midst of some kind of trials which Peter failed. Whom have not seen? What a verse. What a phrase. They had not seen him, but they had heard of his character. They had heard, his, heard of his preaching. They had heard the sacrifice for sin. And they had heard about his resurrection. And they heard about his ascension to heaven to sit with the Father on the right hand throne. Is it possible to love one whom we have not seen? It's not the case usually, is it? They had never seen him face, never touched him. They never sat down to eat with him. And yet Peter says, you loved him. It is a present active verb. And it's very important when you're doing Bible study is to learn the tense of the verb.